Uh, my name is Rudy Ramirez. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. I am a theater director. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Emma Goldman, who is uh, one of my uh, heroes from history, who I really love and who I have done multiple theater pieces about before. We'll probably do more again at some point. She is, she's uh, the badass. episode of Emily Learns About, where I get people that are smarter than me and also nerds to come and teach me about things I don't know from history. And so I'm super excited because we have Rudy here. Hey, Rudy. Hey. Yay. How's it going? Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and I'm, a, I'm embarrassed because I know almost nothing about Emma Goldman. Well, what do you know about Emma I know. Goldman? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I feel like you're going to respect me less. Um, I think I know, and so I purposely didn't look at, I knew you were going to come talk about this today, but I was like, I was tempted to go read Wikipedia so I could seem smarter, but then I decided that, that was not in the spirit of the show. So I, um, she's from the like 19, early 1900s, progressive yes. era. Okay. And then she was like an anarch, like a socialist, anarcho you're, kind of you're socialist. Right the first time, right the first time, anarchist, anarchist. Anarchist. Okay. So she was an anarchist. I don't know if she was an immigrant or if she was, but I, in my head, I think she's an immigrant. Yes. Okay. Yes. I was like, oh no, or is, has the school system just forced me to think of all anarchists as immigrants and that <laughs> she does something probably, I think like World War One-ish era and gets asked politely to leave. Uh, politely-ish. I don't know, <laughs> politely-ish. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's what I know. Uh, it's funny because you get, um, uh, the big lead on Emma Goldman is her, uh, the, her suspected but not actual involvement in the McKinley assassination. And that's oh. usually where people know her from. Oh, I had no idea she was involved. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, thought no, no, to no. be involved. She, uh, she's, uh, the thing is, she wasn't. That's the funny part. <laughs> um, and, but, but she was associated with it. Uh, so, and, and she was an immigrant. And I think that's, that's such an important part of her story. So I always start my Emma Goldman things with, uh, with, with what I call a fairy tale, uh, her fairy tale. She comes to the U S in 1885. Oh, okay. Um, uh, as I like about like 16 years old and, you know, she's coming from what's now Lithuania. Mm. Um, as, as a, a, a German Jewish, uh, woman, her father was an asshole of like epic proportions. He was abusive. He was, and he felt, he was very much, he said like, um, all a young Jewish girl needs to know is how to make a filter fish, how to cut noodles fine and to give the man plenty of children. Ugh, um, I hate him already. Yeah, 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 no. And, uh, and Emma hated him too. Um, and Emma what I think is amazing is that, is that she shows this anarchist spirit from such a young age, mm -hmm. right? She, she's invited, uh, she and her sister are invited to a ball, basically a party. And, mm -hmm. um, and she wants to go. And so, um, but her, uh, father won't let her. And so she says, well, and I will defy him, uh, she says the tour sister. And, uh, and she, saves up money to get herself a new dress to go but then the dress gets stolen but then she's just like you know screw it i'm gonna go anyway and so she wakes up like her sister in the middle of the night <gasps> like and she's just like we're going to this party you and i right now does she and sew a new dress like pretty in pink style i want her in her bedroom like molly ringwald and pretty in pink sewing a new dress she was you know she and her sister you know they they were like you know these smart you know cool young women um and so she goes to the party okay. all right and and she dances all night long and um and her sister's like oh my god emma we have got to get back <laughs> before dad wakes up and she says like, no, 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 I, I, I'm having too much fun. She's like, and she said, I want to dance myself to death. And she <gasps> says, to dance myself to death, what better end? She says that in her, her autobiography, Living My Life. And, and then she and her sister, like at the, at the very end of the ball, they like sneak out and they go home. And like, they have like five minutes before it's like wake up time. But then like, 
but they get away with it. Yes. And, um, and I feel like that is so key to Emma's spirit. And I love the fact that it's sort of like a DIY Cinderella without a prince. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, it's like a movie Disney needs to make and will never make. Yeah. It's like, that's so awesome. And there's man, what, so what was it to die dancing? To dance, to dance oneself to death. What better end? Oh my gosh. I want someone to make a pop song out of that. That's, this is all great. I love her already. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that was her, that was her whole thing. And so that's, that's the other most famous thing about Emma that people get drawn. Emma was forgotten for a long time, uh, but then gets this revival during the second wave of feminism mm-hmm. as like feminist social feminist anarchists are like behind her and realize like, oh my God, this was like not just a leader, but one of the biggest leaders of the movement was this incredible woman. Mm-hmm. There's this story about how, how these people were, tra- they were trying to come up with like an Emma Goldman t-shirt uh, to like sell at like, anarchist you know book fairs and things like that <laughs> so there's this story about what emma goldman she becomes a, 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 a she's, when she starts gaining prominence as an anarchist all right she goes to this party all right like so this is it's all about parties and dance mm-hmm. um and um and so she goes to this party and she's dancing you know like crazy she's going off and this like younger dude goes to her and is like emma gotta stop what are you talking about she's just like you you know you're becoming like a prominent figure in the anarchist movement so like you being you dancing like this you know it's you're making a spectacle of yourself it's not like respectable for a woman to be doing this thing and she basically says like did you not read the label that says anarchist? I was going to say, I was like, there's nothing more hilarious than an anarchist telling another anarchist, like, you're not abiding by the social structures that have been forced upon us. Seriously. And she's just like, she's just like, and what she said and what, what this woman wanted to put on the t-shirt was um, this, this thing of like, of, of I fight for freedom for everyone's right to beautiful things. And if if I can't if you if your revolution won't let me dance, I don't want to be I don't want I don't want it. And so they distill that to the T-shirt down into um, if I can't dance, I don't want your revolution or I don't want to be part of your revolution. Okay. So she never exactly said that, but like it's definitely the ethos that she kind of lived by. But I can and, see I can see how and I'm and I'm curious um, a little bit more about the movement too. But like I can see how that she then gets pushed aside historically as just sort of that seems very frivolous or oh well that's just like a woman's view of revolution is that just let me dance or whatever which clearly is i'm sure is not all that she was talking about but i can see the problem with like okay if then people just think well she just wanted to get to go to parties and you know do fun stuff when I'm sure she had a lot more substance to her oh, <laughs> movement than that. See, and that makes sense to me. And I want, in a second, I want you to kind of explain, like, how do you explain anarchism to, you know, like we we both used to teach high school, right? Like, I feel like there's just, it's totally misunderstood. It's totally not what people think it is. People, like, when most people hear anarchy, they think chaos, yeah. right? Um, and so I'm curious, like, what was the anarchist movement in the at around the turn of the century? So the anarchist movement was um, actually. I think that one of my uh, one of my favorite things is that an anarchist friend of mine now says that she loves to talk to libertarians because she says to them, "Is this like you know you think they're libertarian and you may be an anarchist?" Um, and so, uh, so anarchism is is a position of critique that says that any state will inevitably consolidate too much power in the hands of the few. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what we need is a lot of small local democratic governance. Um, and, and it's, it's saying that anarchism resists the idea of the consolidation of power in any small group, whether it's a state or in capitalism, whether it's the capitalist of industry. Right. Um, so like this, this ties together because, um, you know, her, Aside from the, the the ball, her like secret origin story is she goes to she she comes to the U.S. as a teenager. Um, she gets work. She gets married. Um, uh, she very quickly realizes that the wedding was a mistake. 
Mm. Um, and so uh, she, uh, and then she goes to this speech given by a woman named Johanna Grein, and uh, and she talks about her being like one of the foremost anarchist women of her time. But that's the only record we have is Emma Goldman, this account of Emma Goldman talking about. Yeah. Um, so she uh, goes to hear Johanna Grea speak about the Haymarket riots. Right. Um, Haymarket is really interesting because it's this protest that then turns into a riot and it turns violent who like threw the bomb or whatever. And it, it kind of destroys the labor movement for a while because all labor unions get associated with like violence and anti-police anti-whatever exactly and like and with anarchism you yeah. know anarchism and socialism and so like so johanna like it, it, she talks about you know that the anarchists were arrested and blamed for starting the riot it's a state that like they didn't um but they were a convenient uh people to blame and so they were uh they were hanged hmm. uh in, um in chicago um Emma Goldman hears this and she is just consumed by this story and it becomes like, and, and she goes to Johanna and she just like, says, thank you. You know, like, and, and Johanna said, we're like, you know, I think that their, their work and their writing and anarchism are going to become very meaningful to you. And so, you know, after this, Emma gets more and more into the movement and more and more unhappy in her marriage and happy where she is, which is in Rochester, New York. So she decides, she's like, I'm going to, she divorces her husband, she leaves and she goes and she's like, like, let's see, this, she would have been like 17, 18 years old when she's doing all this. Oh, oh, well, yeah. that's way younger than I was thinking. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. That's no. awesome. She's like, you know, it's like we, we forget that that's when people were getting married. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. So like, so she goes to New York, all right, and she goes to this cafe where she hears that all the anarchists hang, hang out, and she meets two people there who become hugely important in her life. Um, one is this guy Sasha Bergman, um, and she like she's struck by him because he's like eating like a horse, like he's just like eating everything, he's, like, um, and drinking like lots of really strong black coffee. And she meets uh, Johann Moos, who is the editor of an anarchist uh, newsletter called De Freiheit. She and Sasha become friends and then lovers. Mm -hmm. And then she meets, uh, I think, Sasha's cousin, Fedya. Um, and and she starts having these feelings for Fedya as well. Ooh. And, you know, and, and then finally, like, Fedya and Sasha and her all talk, and they're like, well, we're anarchists. Why are we like, why why are we letting monogamy constrain us? Whoa! And so she becomes like lovers with both Sasha and Fedya. Wow, um, she really was born in the wrong. She man, if she could have lived in the twenty first century, she still would have been like on the edge in the twenty first century. She still would have been, but like, wow, doing that in the turn of the century, like nineteen hundreds, is radical. Uh, and so she uh, so. Whereas Johann Most, like, he sees her potential as a speaker. Hmm. And so he starts sending her out to speak about anarchism. And she's really good at it. Hmm. You know, like, she takes to it very quickly. You know, she's, she's got, like, she's very smart. She's funny. She's really good off the cuff. You know, um, you know, she's not preparing these speeches. She's just speaking a lot to her heart contemporaneously. So she and Fedya and Sasha are like, well, we need to like earn money. And how do we like do all this so we can make sure that we can keep with the movement? So they're just like, I know, let's open an ice cream shop. What? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Plot twist. That is not where I thought that was going. I know. I know. It's just, it's hilarious. Like, Something, it's something I love because it's like you realize like, you know, when you have an activist like life, you know, that usually doesn't pay you. So what are the jobs that you do while you're doing it? Oh, my gosh. Um, an anarchist yeah. ice cream shop. I'm going to spend the next three hours of my day after we're done talking brainstorming names for an anarchist ice cream shop. Right. Exactly. Oh. Like, you know, uh, proletariat pistachio, you know. <laughs> uh, I would just want to like recap where we are. 
So she has emigrated at like what, 1516 from what would today be Lithuania. She's one of those scary new immigrants, air quotes there. Um, Mm -hmm. She got to go to the parties by sneaking out and she did the thing she wanted to do because she's a badass. She got married and then is now divorced at like 17 or 18, which is insane. She's gotten involved in anarchism through hearing a woman speak, but then very quickly was getting sort of controlled by a dude in the movement and said, no, thank you. And now she seems to be happily living with her two lovers uh, who they on they all run an ice cream shop together in New York City. Is that where we are? Yes, and this is when they decide that they're going to assassinate a capitalist street. <gasps> oh my gosh, if ever there was a cliffhanger. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, we're, this 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 is going to be part 1 is like the rise and now they are plotting in the back of their ice cream shop as they're scooping proletariat pistachio. They're plotting to assassinate. Do we know who they're plotting to assassinate? Can we say that? Henry Clay Frick. Okay. So on the next episode, will they or won't they assassinate Frick? (gasps) I'm so excited.